thumb drive. Yeah. Looks like a file. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I just wanted to make sure that I understood that correctly. Right. When you said the art card would come maybe three times a week. So we have, let's say, cafeteria deposits that have a lot of cash in them. So we're losing out on that interest while we have to sit here and wait for them rather than have that, that stuff being deposited on a daily basis. Right? Correct. Okay. Right. So they, the funds would go into the account every other day. Um, okay. Yeah. Which, you know, on a daily basis, it may not be that much, but it's just, it's still. You know, they did offer, like, for checks and things, they do have the scanner. We have a scanner, yeah. right? That's so it. we can do that yeah. to, to scan them. But I wouldn't want to do that on a partial one. We have deposits that are part, we have this a lot with our activities accounts and other things yeah. where we have checks and we have cash. So you would suggest we hold those checks back? Or how are we supposed to account for that deposit that's partial checks and partial cash? We can scan the checks and put that in, but now that's not an efficiency, that's increased work here in the office for someone to tie that together. We also talked about that more safe, but I just didn't think that was a, yeah, the safe. Because we have a lot of those deposits. Yeah. That are that's why it's better in three days a week, because you're not going to have. We just, yeah. but so, so when you have a deposit that's split, okay, let, let's go back to that. If it's three times a week, do then do we send those checks along with the cash deposit to make it one whole deposit so that we still are efficient here, or do you want us scanning them separately and then we have to figure out how to piece the the actual coinage and? That, I mean that's up to you. Um, the the armor service provider can accept checks, okay. Um, so that that is an option. Uh, we found the scanner. To be a good fit. Yes, it does make extra deposits. Um, it, it, you know, it's it's still in those deposits, but it, it, um, it gives you the next day availability. So you're scanning those deposits today, they're in your account tomorrow. Whereas if you're waiting, you know, today's Monday, the truck already came, you're waiting for those checks to get in the account Wednesday and Thursday. Right. So, but we have to, yeah. you know, we're, we're trying to reconcile not just our our bank accounts, which that, you know, we would know what we deposited through the scanners and what, what the yard car picked up, but through the other records that our auditors need for whatever account is, is coming. And I, and I realize that you deal with a lot of other school districts and I'm familiar with, with those school districts. So I'm not trying to be problematic here. I'm just, I'm trying to really see the efficiency here in our, in our office for it. Um, some of the other things, uh, I'm trying to make some notes here with those operating efficiencies. Credit and debit cards, do you, do you have those? How do those work? Because we do have an account now with some controls where it's actually a debit card. We have internal controls on what we, the spending of that, but do you offer that as well? Absolutely. Because a lot of companies anymore, they want payment immediately. So we have debit, uh, debit cards that, that are tied to each of each or any of the accounts you want to designate. Um, you can set limits uh, for those debit cards, spending limits, um, specific to the to that user. Okay. Uh, we also have a, a commercial card program which we haven't presented yet, but um, that is something that is available uh, to have. Because right now we just really get it tight, don't we, Brian? We only have like a $2,500 balance. We don't allow any more in that account. So sometimes we're transferring money into that account from our, our general fund, you know, a couple times a week, depending on the. And, and, and even as tight as we have it, we've had to change the account numbers twice so far this year. Not on the debit cards. At Christmas time? No. Or no? No. What was the. Oh. Was that the debit card? The what? American Girl Donald Christmas. Yeah. Someone tried to buy American Miss Oh, that, yeah. 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 So we had to change the camera. That was there. on one thing, yeah. 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 Um, we try to keep that that tight. Um, they have to oh, right, right, because they're how tight we have it, mm -hmm. but it's still, exactly. they're, they're uh, fast prey. Because yeah, and, and, and that way if somebody does hack it and the bank doesn't make good on it, which so far anything that's happened, our bank has made good on it. I'm assuming you would do the same thing. Um, we don't. We still don't want you know these things to happen. So we only keep like twenty five hundred dollars so that they're not taking it from anyone, so that you're not at twenty five hundred dollars more than twenty five hundred dollars. So we try to do that. Um, and now that we've got all of our little things 
that I've, that I've questioned that sound like problems, I, we did have a bank loan with TD Bank, and I must tell you, you were excellent to work with, because I usually manage the day-to-day -day things with these things, and I always got all of my answers immediately. We were so easy to work with with any question that we had um, to make the payments. It was, it was wonderful. Which one so, did you do the other one? Was um, it Brian? Lucaitis, maybe? Uh, I did deal with him. Okay. I have I have dealt with him. I know. It's yeah. Like every month I get the X72 from is it Nicole Carrera. Yeah, that's Carreri. the show. I was she, gonna she say was, like, was, like, I was gonna okay. say it was it was Kate Drake and then she mm -hmm. left and Nicole took over. So, yes. Right. But excellent, excellent service. I have to say that. So I'm not truly but trying man, to be problematic. Nicole I have some things to be, say as well. So I just want to I, I lost Kate a couple of years ago. Yes. She left and she ended up she just had a little boy. Not too long ago, so I was hoping she'd come back to work, but she decided she was going to stay home and be a mom, and that's mm -hmm. that's a good thing. But uh, um, yeah, so but Nicole's our account manager, and, and she's our operational support. And I, I have to tell you, it's it's wonderful. We go to the we go to the uh, the, the ASBO every year out in Hershey, and we have customers who come up, they shake my hand, they're looking for Nicole, but she's the one that gets all the hugs. <laughs> So that's a, that's a great thing, right. but that's part of what we're about as well. Because uh, on the government side, Nicole and I are the operational team that helps take care of the relationship and brings the operational personnel along with is it Kurt Kelly Riley? Kelly. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Kelly Riley would be the, the additional support person on the Treasury management side. So even going back to your question about uh, whether you know doing an ACH transfer for payroll mm -hmm. or if you're doing that only the wire, let's just say. The FOB doesn't work that day, or you can't get in the e treasury. If you have an outgoing wire that day, for example, you can easily just send an email to Nicole and I. We can get the wire out for you. I can have uh, I can have Nicole initiate the wire, and uh, and I can approve it. So you know, little things like that make a difference because we do know sometimes things happen. If a key FOB dies right away, it might be the next day before you get a new one, or you know, maybe someone in the office isn't available right away. So we want to be there to make sure that uh, that we can we can respond. As a matter of fact, on my card, my cell phone number is on there, and I'm I'm always out on the road visiting customers. I want to be in touch with people. And that if something does happen, if an emergency happens, uh, I had a customer I was supposed to that I'm going to see tomorrow. <coughs> They're a little worried they might have some fraud on their account. They don't have some of those protective services in place. I'm seeing, I got the call today, I'm going to see them first thing tomorrow morning and just see if their concerns are, you know, are warranted. If there is an issue, we get the appropriate people involved and then going forward, we're going to have a conversation with them on positive pay if that happens to be the case. But the nice thing is, is that when we do have that type of issue, that we're reachable, we're approachable. It's not like you have to look in your Rolodex to find out who do I call. Call me. And I bring in the appropriate people. Okay. That token issue actually happened to me. Yes. That's why I, I brought that specific instance up at our, at our previous provider. Um, and I said, well, what are we going to do? You know, do we have to run to the nearest branch and get one? You have to authorize it right away. You can't mail it to me. We've got a payroll with me. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, that, and, and actually, the current financial institution does offer that. You weren't here when we set up our, our relationship with them. Um, but we declined it simply because of those tokens, because for all part of our internal controls here also are if, if the funds are leaving our bank, we not only need Brian's signature, but we need your signature. You know, we need a, a board member. Yeah, we need two signatures. And that meant that the board member was going to also have to have a token, and we didn't know if he could be around, and we wouldn't be able because we couldn't send that payment otherwise, and so we declined that feature. And that's why we run it to the bank. It's not that we're required to be specifically Decline it for that reason because of what happened with the tokens. So to me, that's very important to know how do I get a, a, a replacement token right. in a hurry. That's nice to know you have a backup just in case. Yes, yes. So I don't, you know, I don't ask questions to be a problem. I no, that's not a problem. Up, so. No, as a matter of fact, later on tonight you may get a little epiphany with other questions. My, my cell phone number's on there. Our email, our email addresses are there. You know, uh, we, we want your business with TD Bank, but we also want you to feel comfortable with the transition. Just to give you an idea of the implementation phase, if, if, if you know, if we're going to move forward, uh, 
uh, take about three to six months to set up all the different services. Of course, we can do with your speed and your level. Um, but you know, typically with the services that we have involved, uh, that three to six month window, uh, transitioning everything from another bank takes time as well. So there's really no rush as long as you can do it live. And we can help out with the, the detailed patient schedule uh, and training schedule. So each step along the way, uh, there's an implementation team that's in place that helps to train the users for each treasury, uh, get everything set up properly for the armed service, uh, train the people on how to, how to compile those deposits uh, to, to the standards that uh, Guardian uses, um, implementation and installation of the scanner, um, uh, set up all the positive pay filters and, and positive pay files that are going to be sent, they're all tested and, and, uh, and make sure everything is, is appropriate before we go live. So just to give you an idea, it's usually going to be like three to six months. People, people, the state, and everything to switch there. Right. Right. There are a lot of. And with ACH transactions, it usually takes 60 to 90 days to transfer that over as well. So if you do decide you're going to go forward with TD Bank, the first thing that we do, if, if you call me one day and say, Kevin, we decided to make that transition over to TD Bank, the first thing we'll do is have the accounts open for you in a matter of a day, just so you have the account numbers right up front. And so you could start with some of those transitions because it does, it takes a little bit of time. And even, even once the accounts are open, all the treasury management services are set up. You, you know, if you, have, if you have seven accounts with your current bank and you're opening seven with us, you have probably a three month overlap where you're managing 14 accounts and 14 reconcilements. Not saying it's an easy process, but eventually you'll pick a date that's good for you to say, oh, okay, well, everything's ready as of, February 1st, we're going to go live, and at that point, um, you start, you know, transfer most of the funds over to the account, start using TD Bank, and then you have to allow the other checks and ACHs and everything else to clear out. So it's a, it takes a little time, but we also work with you during that period. When we sign you up uh, for uh, the E-Treasury, for example, all those uh, secure processes, you can, you can name who is able to uh, who's going to be authorized to approve wires and ACHs, all that can be done up front. Uh, and